Hey what's going on guys welcome back to another video on the channel and in this one we are going to take a look at the small nuclear reactor. Now this video was highly requested by a lot of you guys and now that we have gone over methods in which we can produce uranium and plutonium fuel rods it is finally time to put these fuel rods into good use. Now mind this. This reactor is only named small nuclear reactor but it has a lot of tricks up its sleeve. So in this video I am going to go over each and every single detail that you need to know in order to make your own small nuclear plant and how to produce energy from it. So with that said guys without any further ado let's get straight into this video. Ok guys. So we are going to start off with the absolute basics. So here is how the small nuclear reactor looks like. And it is normally three and a half blocks high when it is placed like this. But there is a feature which is unique to this very nuclear reactor. You can control the control rods of this nuclear reactor. And in case you don't know, control rods are used to control the rate of reaction in a nuclear reactor. So when the control rods are raised like this, it becomes four and a half blocks high. So make sure you keep that in mind. Now let's take a look at the G1. So first of all you can control the control rods and the compression of the steam. So you can compress the steam normally 10 times and 100 times which will give you super dense steam. Also there is the bar for hull temperature and the core temperature. Now the hull is where the water is gonna be and the core is where the reaction is gonna take place. Now you need water and coolant in order to run this small nuclear reactor and coolant can be produced by nitre and water in a chemical plant and then you need to pump coolant into this reactor but wait there is more now when you start the reaction it is going to give off radiation in the atmosphere so in order to protect this you need to cover the open sides of the nuclear reactor with concrete bricks and if you do that the radiation will be contained but this has some disadvantages and i'll tell you why in just a minute so before that let's take a look at another thing that you can do in order to control the radiation which is also used in real life by the way. You can build the entire nuclear reactor underwater. So as you can see here I have placed the nuclear reactor and I covered the entire periphery of it with water. And now if I go down and click on the nuclear reactor you will see that water will start filling up and this water is never gonna go up. So by the way you need not supply any water to this nuclear reactor. And also this water will not let any radiation out into the atmosphere. So yeah, two for one. Now also this nuclear reactor can produce infinite amount of coolant. You heard that right. This reactor can produce its own coolant and that is something that is only unique to this small nuclear reactor. And for that you need one single block of nitre. So when you take a block of nitre and you place that block on any of the open side of the small nuclear reactor and now that if I start placing some water in this nuclear reactor uh, so I, let me demonstrate that with an infinite water tank and if I place this water here you will see that this nuclear reactor will start producing coolant so yeah infinite coolant guys no more need to produce any coolant or water so now let's take a look at fuel Uranium fuel rods and plutonium fuel rods. Now you can produce dual fuel rods or quad fuel rods. Both of them or rather all three of them will have different heat particles and they will last for nearly the same amount of time. But yeah, if you use the quad fuel rods, the better it is. And also this is how you can place the fuel rods by the way. The closer you place them, the more heat they are gonna produce but the sooner they are gonna burn out. So make sure that you have that in mind. Now that we have covered all of this, let's quickly take a look at how to produce your very own nuclear power plant. So first of all, place down a block of nitre one block away from the ground and then surrounding it place down four nuclear reactors. So that all four of the nuclear reactors will share this one block and they will produce coolant from it. This is the most efficient way that you can arrange the nuclear reactors. But if you don't have these many nuclear reactors, you can also put down one or two, whatever you would like. Now from each and every single one of these nuclear reactors, take out super dense steam pipes and listen to this carefully. 
you need to take out the super dense steam pipes. Now it is up to you if you only want to produce dense steam or normal steam but the reactor will work best when it is producing super dense steam. So in this way connect all the pipes on the bottom and take these pipes out and we will connect industrial generators to it later. Now it's time to produce a section in which we are going to place water and also modifiers. Now I will tell what, what modifiers are in the later part of the video. But just make sure that there is a one block gap like this. There is a one block gap between the open end of the nuclear reactor and the place where you are placing the glass. And wherever there is no ground, place some glass there. So now that I have covered the entire periphery of all the nuclear reactors with spaces like this and the pipes won't let any water out, start filling them up with water. Now when you do that, as you can observe, every single nuclear reactor has three phases exposed to water and one phase exposed to the nitre block. So it can produce its own coolant and it has also infinite amount of water supply. So as you can see, all the nuclear reactors are now producing water and coolant. So with that said, there is also one other thing that I want to show you guys, which is the reactor remote control block. Now in order to make this work, you are going to need the remotes for this and the number of power plant or basically the number of nuclear reactors you have, that is the amount of reactor blocks and reactor remotes you are going to need. So here as you can see, I am going to take four remotes because I have four nuclear reactors and I am going to assign each remote to a different power plant, oh sorry, different nuclear reactor. One, two three and four you just have to right click on them by the way to assign the position and now that when you will start placing them in the re reactor remote control block it will be assigned to that nuclear reactor so basically you can control your reactors from far far away you don't need to be beside them in order to control them and also very one important feature about this reactor remote control block is going to be its automatic shutdown method. So as you can see, now that the coolant is filling up, we are going to turn on the automatic shutdown for all the reactor remote control blocks. Now what the automatic shutdown will do is when it will detect that there is no coolant available anymore, it will automatically shut down the reaction so that your reactors won't melt down or they won't explode. Yeah, that happens. So be careful while using that. Now that this is done, place down three industrial turbines. And from the very first turbine, it is going to take in the super dense steam. Now coming from the super dense steam, we are going to get dense steam, which goes into the second turbine. And finally, the third turbine will take the normal steam. So this is how it goes. Super dense steam to dense steam and dense steam to normal steam. And that normal steam will then be converted into water which then you can store in a tank or even you can pump it up back into the nuclear reactors if you would like to but i don't think that will be necessary because by placing down three sources of water you already have more than enough water and with this done a nuclear reactor setup or basically a power plant setup is complete so the only thing remaining is to connect these industrial turbines via cable and once you do that yeah, the only thing remaining will be to place the nuclear rods and to start off the reaction. So we are going to start this thing with the most basic fuel rod, which is a single uranium fuel rod. And we are going to see how much energy it gives us, right? So in order to start the reaction, you are going to need at least two fuel rods. You can have more, but you are going to need at least two to start the reaction. So place two nuclear fuel rods in each and every single nuclear reactor. The final one. And now once that you have done that, it is time to raise the control rods and start the reaction off. So one, two, three, four. Damn, look at how cool this looks. This is the best thing about these nuclear reactors, the control rods. And by the way, don't forget to switch the compression to the third mode, which is the super dense steam. Otherwise, your reactors will only produce normal steam and your this 
industrial generator setup it won't run so as you can see we are getting energy and yeah look we are already at 1 million HG now there is another thing that I want to show you guys which is the Geiger counter now if I quickly take the handheld Geiger counter and click at the radiation here it is going to be yeah around 38 watts per second and as you keep on going further and further it's going to drop down to 35 or 32 so yeah not very dangerous level of radiation but still don't forget to wear your hazmat suits now as the coolant runs out as you can see now the coolant has started running out so our reactors have gone into automatic shutdown now the turbines have stopped rotating and the coolant has gone down and as soon as the control blocks or control rods go down the coolant will start filling up again this is why the automatic shutdown was so important guys it will protect your nuclear reactor and your base now finally let's take a look at how much energy we got from that operation 7.78 million so nearly 8 million hg from one round of nuclear reactors running and believe it that is a lot of energy you still have a lot of efficiency left in those uranium fuel rods so yeah now let's talk about some modifiers now there are a lot of modifiers available and i am going to post a screenshot here which is available on the wikipedia page but the one that we are going to use is lava so like the water that we have placed here what happens if you place lava now the lava will help in increasing the hull temperature of your nuclear reactor and as you remember i told you hull is the place where water is kept so if you raise the hull temperature it will increase the production of steam and increased production of steam means more energy so now let's start off the reaction and there okay so now that all the control rods are up let's see what is the amount of energy that we are getting whether it is more or less and look at this if you remember correctly previously our setup was not moving at this fast speed and now look at the rate of energy production so this is how this is one example of how you can use modifiers but there are a lot of modifiers available so experiment yourself and try them out they are really interesting guys and as you can see the hull heat has gone up to 86 degrees from the previous 46 degrees so that was all i had for this video guys if you guys like this detailed review please smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel if you want to see more tutorials like this in the future let me know in the comment section down below how you found this video and ideas for any future video peace out guys stay safe